Electromagnetic induction is the creation of an electric current in a wire by changing the magnetic field around that wire. Faraday's law of induction describes how the EMF is changed with a changing magnetic flux. Magnetic flux is the product of the strength of the magnetic field and the area times the cosine of the angle between the magnetic field and the area. And the induced EMF is the change in the negative number of wires times the magnetic flux over the change in time. So really, there are three ways that we can induce an electromotive force. We could change the magnetic field. If we increase the magnetic field, then the magnetic flux will increase, and if we decrease the magnetic field, then the magnetic flux will decrease. Either way, this is a change in magnetic flux, and so there will be an induced EMF. We could also change the area of the wire. If the area gets larger, then so will the magnetic field. If the area gets smaller, the magnetic field will get smaller. Again, whether it goes up or down, we are changing our magnetic flux, and so we are inducing an EMF. The final way to cause a change in magnetic flux is to change the angle between the magnetic field and the area vector. So if any of these three things happen, then an electric current will be induced in a conducting wire. So anytime we have a change in magnetic flux, an electric current will be induced in a conducting wire. Changing the magnetic flux will induce an EMF in the conducting wire. The induced EMF in turn creates an electric current through the wire which will then induce its own magnetic field. So now we have two magnetic fields in the same system. This brings us to Linz's law. At its most basic, Linz's law states that induction opposes any change in flux. This means that the electric current that is created by an induced EMF points in a direction so that the magnetic field it produces opposes the change in flux. Hence the negative sign in the equation. So if the magnetic flux decreases, then the induced magnetic field will point in the same direction as the original magnetic field. If the magnetic flux increases, then the induced magnetic field will point in the opposite direction as the original magnetic field. In order to apply Linz's law to a situation, there are two conditions that must be met. First off, the system in question must have a closed loop of current conducting wire. If the loop is not closed, then there is no area being exposed to the magnetic field. Second, there must be a change in magnetic flux. If there's no magnetic flux, then there's no induced electrical current inside the wire. Solving problems using Linz's law involve quite a bit more than simply plugging numbers into an equation. If you start out and take your time, they don't have to be quite so painful. Begin by sketching out the situation. This doesn't have to be anything fancy, but a good diagram is one of the most powerful tools you can use to solve any problem. And this diagram include a good representation of the direction of the magnetic field with respect to the loop of wire. Then determine whether the magnetic flux is increasing or decreasing by using the magnetic flux equation. This is really important because it's going to determine what you do next, because this tells you the direction of the induced electric current. If the magnetic flux increases, the induced current will point to the direction opposite the direction of the original magnetic field. If the magnetic flux decreases, the induced current will point in the same direction as the original magnetic field. Now that we know the direction of the induced electric current, we can use our right hand rule to determine the direction of the induced magnetic field. Remember if you point your thumb in the direction of the current and wrap your hand around the wire, your fingers point in the direction of the induced magnetic field. So, Calculate the magnitude of the induced EMF when a single loop magnet with a radius of 6 centimeters is thrust into the coil if the magnetic field increases from 0.05 to 0.25 in 0.100 seconds. Phew. So let's see. We know there is one loop of wire and the beginning and ending magnetic field strength and the time it takes to change the magnetic field. And in order to find the electromotive force, we need N the change in magnetic flux, and the change in time. Magnetic flux is found by taking the magnetic field times the area and the cosine of the angle theta. Since we are not told otherwise, we can assume that the angle theta does not change. However, we are told that the magnetic field does change from 0.05 tesla to 0.25 tesla. So we can multiply that times our area, which is pi r squared, to find our magnetic flux. 
Then we can go back to our EMF equation and plug these in to find 0.026 volts, which is really not a large amount. However, we could increase this amount fairly easily by increasing the number of loops using a stronger magnet or changing the magnetic field faster.